Hi Weaving friends, today we're going to learn how to lash on your warp to your loom. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to this channel. You can even donate to my tip jar. I'm going to leave that link down below so that I can keep making these awesome free videos for you all and I thank you so much for your support. So what is lashing on? Well, it's an alternative way of tying your warp onto your front apron rod. And this applies for whether you're using a rigid handle loom, a table loom, a floor loom. It's the same process. You have to tie the warp onto the front apron rod of the loom. And there are a couple of different ways of doing that. You can tie directly on, and you would have seen me doing this many, many times in my videos, or you can lash on. Now I've been asked for a very long time whether I can do a lashing on video. The reason that I haven't done it up until now is that I don't personally use the method very much myself because I prefer tying directly onto the apron rod. There are a couple of benefits from lashing on though. One of them is if you have a really slippery yarn that doesn't like to stay in knots, then the lashing on technique will work perfectly. The only yarn that I've really had that experience with is anything with silk in it, whether it's 100% silk or whether it's a silk blend. It's slippery stuff um, and sometimes tensile can be fairly slippery as well and your knots won't necessarily hold their tension so good when you put them on the front bar. And the knots don't necessarily hold the sort of tension that you want them to if you tie on directly. The second benefit of lashing on is if you wanna really conserve your warp yarn, and really get as much out of it as possible, then the lashing on method will eliminate quite a bit of waste. Okay, so let's get started on how we actually do this. We're going to take the warp and any width of warp will be absolutely fine and will work for this method. But we wanna start by taking around one inch bunches and you wanna make a knot in the bunch. So I'm gonna make it probably fairly close to the end and I'm just gonna do like a regular overhand knot. Okay, so two things for this knot. I don't want the knot to reach my apron rod because I'm gonna be needing a little bit of room when I take my lashing on yarn through in a moment. So I'm actually going to, I'm actually gonna roll my warp back just a little bit, just to give my knots that little bit more space and that's a little bit better. And then the second thing is, each time you take a one inch bunch and make a knot, you wanna have it, try and get the knot around the same position as the last knot. This can be a little bit tricky, but just try and do your best and compare them as you go. Compare them like before you really tighten it up too. So that one's pretty close. And then when I tighten it down, it'll be very close to the other one. So I can keep moving along for my entire warp, making these little bunches and knots. So I'm gonna compare it to my last one to, oh, and I've got, few too many threads in that bunch. Okay, and then when I pull that knot down, then it's in a similar position to the last one. Pull the knot down and it's similar to the last one. So just keep going along and keep comparing your bunches. Um, and as I said, it doesn't have to be exact. I mean, it's very hard to get your knots in exactly the same place, um, but you wanna have them placed in a similar spot. Just makes it a little bit easier when you come to tensioning. This tutorial is brought to you by the Anastasia Shawl Pattern. This is a rigid heddle project that incorporates the use of beautiful yarns and simple techniques to make a lovely, elegant garment. This is a low sew project and I do give options for both hand sewing or if you prefer machine sewing.
The PDF pattern for this project is now available in my Etsy shop and I'll leave the link to that down below. Your next job is to measure out your lashing on yarn. I'm using a tapestry cotton and I recommend that you use a strong yarn like a cotton and one that is rigid, not flexible. So wool is not so suitable for this. And I'm gonna measure about six times the width, three, four, five, six, and then from that point of measuring, I want to double that yarn over. So double it on itself and then just pull through till you get to the end. Um, now, six times the width might be a little bit long, but I just prefer to have more rather than less. So I don't like running out halfway through. And then once you've got that, you can put those two cut ends over the apron rod. And then pull that through so that your doubled up point um, I guess you could say your fold is sitting on the rod. So just let me pull that through and there we go. Make sure your brake is on, on that front apron rod as well. And then what we can do is grab our first knot right here. Remember to make sure that's not too close to the apron rod. And if you lift up that group some of the threads are going to separate out so that you can put your finger in the middle and then you can have a starting point for taking your lashing yarn through. So we're just going to take that yarn through the middle so that it's gone through and it's holding on to that first knot. Then we can just go under the apron rod Grab the next bunch and do the same. Lift it up and then get a point where your finger can insert into the middle and then take the yarn through from right to left again. You're going through the middle of the bunch each time. So now I've got two and I'm going to just move those tails so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna go underneath the apron rod again. So you see how I'm repeating the directions. I'm going underneath the apron rod each time and I'm going through the knot from right to left. Next bunch, lift it up. Get a starting point and take the yarn, the um, lashing on yarn through the cotton, the tapestry. Through the middle and then we repeat back down again. And as you go, you'll notice that the ones that you did first, they're starting to get a little bit slack. So if you want to, as you go along, you can tighten them up a little bit just as you go. There will be an opportunity for tightening up at the very end, but it makes it a little bit easier if you tighten up as you go as well. Taking that yarn underneath once more and then I'll get my next bunch, lift it up, get a central point and pull that yarn through from right to left.
Then I'll take the whole lot once more underneath and then I'm ready for the next bunch. Lift it up. Get a central point where I can go through. Thread that yarn through from right to left. Now I've come to one of my apron ties. Um, you can see that this bunch here is heading almost directly down for it. So rather than go back and put my lashing yarn on that side, I'm going to go forward and put it on this side and that just holds that bunch more in the position where it wants to go. Down and around the apron rod. Ready for the next bunch. Pop my finger in there. <laughs> and then take my lashing yarn through and around the apron rod. Again, I can hold tension here while I fix some of these up if I want to, just by pulling on them. And then adjusting the tension, pull on one. While I hold that one under tension, then to pull on the next one, and then the next one, until I get to the top. So if you want to keep that kind of tension going, you should hold on to the leash, hold on to the lashing yarn, because otherwise I'll let go of it and it's just going to lose that bit of tension. Um, and as I said before, it doesn't matter if it does because we'll be fixing the tension at the end. But if you want to just make it that little bit quicker by tensioning it pretty well on the way through, you can do it that way too. Going under the apron rod and I'll continue to hold it to tension it. Lift up my next bunch. Take my lashing yarn through and under When I reach the other end and I've got the and I've got the lashing yarn going through every single knotted bunch, then it's time to fix up my tension to make it really good. So I've just taken the lashing yarn around the apron rod once and then I'm just going to bring it down and around the end of the knob here a couple of times. And that's just going to hold it steady for me just for a moment so I don't have to hold on to it and I can focus on getting my tensioning right. So the idea is that, as I said before, as I've gone along, these little bunches have lost a bit of tension. So I want to tension them up and get them all the same. I can start at the very first one because that's the one that's likely to have the least amount of tension now and start pulling, start pulling any slack and hold on to it and then pull the slack in the next bunch along. Hold on to it, pull up the slack in the next bunch. So you can see here how much slack I've got already. So I'm just gonna hold that and then pull on the next one. And these ones are staying nice and tight because I've held them there. Go to the next one, pull up 
pull and then pinch it so that it doesn't go anywhere. Pull, hold on to that, pull the next one, hold on to that, the next one, hold on to that, the next one. See how much we how much slack we've got here now. Keep going. You don't have to pull this like as tight as you can, just pull it nice, nice and firmly. So you can see if I go along here now, I've got that nice firmness. So just keep holding on so you don't lose that tension as you work your way across. And then we get to the last one and you want to hold on to that one. You can now undo that yarn that you wound a couple of times around the front knob there on the stand and bring that yarn through. And I'm going to just cut this a little bit shorter because it's a little bit hard to work with if it's really, really long. And as I said, I usually do a bit more yarn than I need just in case. So I can now take that around this apron rod and I'm going to take it underneath itself in a kind of a knot like that. Take it around again a couple of times. I'm going to knot it again on that round. Okay, so it's got that, it's like not, it's not knotted really tightly at the moment. So we need to do something more. So I'm going to separate them, the two strands. Remember we had the doubled over yarn, so we've got the two strands. And I'm going to wrap one around one way, one around the other way. And I'm going to do that a couple of times. Just going around each other. Okay, and then... I can bring it to the top and I'm going to do a single knot. Then I'm going to do a bow. And then I'm going to knot that bow. Okay, so the idea with that is you've got a really firm knot, but if you need to undo it, you'll be able to without too much difficulty. You might need to undo it because you might become dissatisfied with your tension or you feel like something slipped somewhere, that just gives you the little option of coming back to it afterwards if you need to. Now we have nice, tight and even tension all the way across. And so you're ready to separate your warp with your chosen method, your preferred method, and to get on with the weaving. I hope this video was helpful to you and until next time, happy weaving.